So tonight I'm going to take 10 good minutes to discuss the military aspect of the conflict between Gaza and Israel, or more specifically Hamas and the Israeli Defense Forces. I am not going to talk about media coverage. I am not going to talk about the overall 75-year conflict or white paper or anything like that. I am going to simply talk about the existing conflict. So what we saw a few weeks ago um, was a pretty predictable, pretty classical surprise attack. Um, it was horrible, of course, but it was very predictable. In fact, Israel did predict it, which is why they constructed a wall and had it garrisoned. Um, there has not been enough said about that intelligence failure. The intelligence failure was colossal, it was epic, and it did nothing um, less than basically um, screw over um, you know, thousands of Israelis. Um, this was very predictable that this was going to happen. Hamas has been saying it. They would do it if they could. Um, someone was asleep at the wheel, and there definitely needs to be repercussions. The most unfortunate thing from the Israeli government side is that no one has resigned or been fired over this, and there should be multiple people. I mean, the greatest failure in Israeli history, there should be punishment. Um, right away with that attack, we notice the nature of Hamas as a terrorist organization. And I know there's been big backs and forth about this, especially in the liberal media and especially on the college campuses. But the reality is, is that Hamas intentionally targeted Israeli civilians. If they were a resistance organization, like some are saying, they would have attacked the Israeli army, they would have attacked the Israeli navy, they would have attacked the Israeli air force and police forces exclusively. They would have bypassed civilian targets and attacked police stations and military bases. Now, they would have taken heavier casualties because of that, um, but that would have been what a not a terrorist group would have done. They specifically targeted civilians. They were on their way to target civilians, which makes them, by definition, a terrorist organization. Um, you know, the initial fighting on the ground in Israel, it was mopped up very quickly um, without air cover, without supporting artillery, um, an infantry only force like the one that went into southern Israel is going to be defeated very quickly once the alarm bell is sounded. And that's exactly what we saw within 48 hours. All the Hamas fighters within Israel were killed, wounded, or captured. And then we get into the next phase of the war, which has been the Israeli siege, as they like to call it. It's more of a blockade than a siege. Um, no one really understands what the term siege means, but it's it's really a blockade. And as well as the quote-unquote air campaign, which is the bombing of Gaza. What I will say is that the entire bombing of Gaza is predicated on 85-year-old air power theory uh, that was created by two Italian air power theorists in the 1920s. And I covered this in one of my books, uh, extensively, but in short, during the 20s, there were a number of air power theorists that came out with this theory that the way to win wars, to the way to attain political objectives during a war was to send large fleets of bombers over your opponent's capital and over your opponent's civilian centers to drop as many bombs on those civilian centers as possible, break the will and the industrial capacity of the population, break their will to fight, break their ability to produce military goods, and then you will win the battle, and this will avoid the relentless slaughter that was seen by the combatants during World War One on the ground in the trenches um, across Europe. Um, this theory was embraced um, amply by the major nations, particularly the United Kingdom, France and the United States, as well as to a lesser degree, Italy itself and um, Japan a little bit. Um, the United States and Britain were the worst culprits. Uh, and during the 1920s and the 1930s, they built huge fleets of bombers. During World War II, these bombers were com combined into what's called the Combined Bomber Offensive, which was a multi-year strategic bombing offensive against Germany, Italy, and um, and Japan. 
after now the goal of that offensive was to break the will of the civilian population and to win the war now after the war the allies commissioned what was called the strategic bomber assessment and the conclusion of the strategic bomber assessment was that the entire bomber campaign during world war ii was a waste um, this was very quickly buried but essentially the thesis of this very very long 700 page or so report was that you cannot break the will of a population that is under a fascist or totalitarian state and even if you could they have no tangible means of overthrowing their government moreover the destruction of uh, an opponent's ability to make war uh, is very difficult from the air and in the end you have to put in ground troops um, moreover the assessment also noted that the bombing offensive actually hardened the morale of the civilian populations that were being bombed, not surprisingly, and that they actually redoubled their efforts to support the war effort. Um, now, advance to modern times, and the military strategists within the Israeli Air Force, within the Israeli government, and within the faction of the US government that supports them have learned precisely nothing. Strategic bombing was attempted in Vietnam, in Korea, in the, in the Iraq war, in a hundred other military conflicts in between. You've heard it your whole life as airstrikes or the US or Britain is doing airstrikes or Israel or Russia or wherever. The reality about the airstrikes is that they simply do not work. They work in order to destroy military units in the field. So if there's a tank division or there's an artillery regiment in the field, and they're all neatly displayed. Their airstrikes are great at destroying those. But airstrikes as a means of forcing public policy don't work. They have never really worked, and they're not going to work in Gaza. The Israeli effort is, again, predicated on this theory that I just went over. Their idea is that we're going to bomb Gaza, we're going to bomb the Hamas targets that we can see and find in Gaza, and that the civilian population in that world sentiment is going to blame Hamas and is going to um, basically kick Hamas out because they don't want to be bombed by Israel anymore. And that is not working. Anyone that reads the internet or just talks to people can realize that that's not working. All the airstrikes are doing because they are causing damage to civilian homes and they are kill killing thousands and thousands of Gazan civilians that had nothing directly to do with the heinous atrocities that were committed by Hamas all the airstrikes are doing is rebranding the narrative and making it seem like Israel is the aggressor when they are not the aggressor. And all it's doing is increasing support for Hamas within Gaza and within the rest of the world. We live in such a time of media content that people look around and they see these images of destroyed homes and children that are killed in airstrikes and civilians that are killed in airstrikes. And it is impossible, unless you are a completely anhedonic human being, it is impossible for you to not feel sympathy and to not blame those responsible for these acts, which in this case is the Israeli military. Now, the Israeli government and the United States government is trying to spin this. The spin is not working and it will not work. Large Sec segments of the world in terms of countries, in terms of governments, in terms of populations, are taking their sympathy away from Israel, which was total at the start of this conflict, and now giving it to Gaza, which is rightly, but then wrongly to also Hamas. The idea of Israeli defending itself and basically avenging these horrific criminals that created these war crimes in the form of Hamas has completely disappeared because all people see is big giant explosions by planes that are flying far ahead. Now, how do you win a campaign like this? You simply don't do airstrikes. You can do a few initial tactical airstrikes from helicopters and low flying planes, some of which that will be shot down, right? And then you move it, you send in the ground troops. And everyone's talking about how terrible urban combat is and how, ter how terrible the casualties that Israel will get 
And they will. They'll get heavy casualties if they move into Gaza, especially within the assault platoons, which are the first platoons that enter into any ground combat operation. However, you're not going to see the same level and the same kind of civilian casualties with a direct ground attack. You know, you know, when there's a direct ground attack, the civilians can hear it coming and they find cover or they just simply vacate their homes. Um, cruise missile strikes, airstrikes, you, you don't even now, you don't even know that they're coming until they've already hit you. It's impossible to take cover. The destructive radius, the shrapnel radius of these explosions are massive. Uh, and you're just not going to see the same level of civilian casualties in a ground operation. Now, will those civilian casualties happen? Absolutely, they will. But they'll be a much lower level, and they'll be more morally defensible, right? Because it's more of an accidental death than semi-intentional, which is kind of what's happening at right now with the airstrikes, regardless of what the spin machine is. Airstrikes, especially in this situation, have never worked. The own reports of the Allies from World War II are still valid, even though they're very old. They are still valid. I highly recommend you read those documents. And the airstrikes are just not going to work. And even from a long-term perspective, what's what's the end game? You, you break it, you buy it. What's the end game? So you bomb them from the air for, you know, three weeks, heck, three months, heck, three years. Eventually, you have to stop, right? Eventually, you have to stop the airstrikes. And then Hamas just comes out of the rubble and rebuilds itself and reconstitutes itself. And you're right back to square one in two years, three years, five years. You, In order to solve the situation, you need to eradicate Hamas. And then after that, you need to fix the underlying sociological and economic and ideological conditions that caused Hamas to rise in the first place and these horrible atrocities to commit it, be committed. And beyond that, you need to challenge the intellectual presuppositions that led to all this mess. Thank you and have a good day.